How do and welcome back. My name is Andrew Hancock and I'm a VMware technical architect from Yorkshire in the United Kingdom. I have worked with the VMware products uh, since their inception in 1998. So that's 23 years I've been working with the VMware product line. Some of you may say if you cut Andy in half, it reads VMware like a sticker rock from Blackpool. I've also written over 100 articles for Experts Exchange and won many other awards and accolades. I am honoured to have been accepted into the VMware vExpert program for the last 11 years and more recently a VMware vExpert Pro for the last two. Welcome back and today in Hancock's VMware Half Hour we're going to talk about backups. Um, again I'm going to put this link in the article, this is actually based uh, today, uh, how to backup brackets export and restore brackets import virtual machines to a VMware vSphere Hypervisor 7 for free. Um, this functionality um, is already incorporated into VMware vSphere or ESXi 7. Um, there are many third-party applications uh, that you can use to back up uh, virtual machines. For instance, um, and I'll, basically, I'll put these links in the steps as well. Uh, but for instance, there's uh, Veeam backup and replication. Uh, popular application. Um, there is uh, Nakivo, um, a popular application. Um, and then a shout out to my friends over at Co Heisty. Uh, and I'd just like to actually personally thank uh, Patrick uh, and Chris, or Chris and Patrick over there, uh, for these uh, lovely VExpert 2021 gifts. I'm not quite sure whether you can make them out. Uh, it's empty now, uh, a co uh, decanter uh, and a lovely set of VMware VExpert glasses to match as well. So thanks guys, top. Anyway, so you know, please, um, if this um, mechanism, free mechanism, doesn't actually basically work for you, uh, then I would certainly recommend uh, Veeam software uh, or uh, Nakivo uh, or Kalheisty Data Protect. Anyway, so all this is actually basically covered um, in our, in the article. If you actually basically want to follow some written guidelines on how to do this, uh, then there's a step-by-step -step tutorial with screenshots that shows you how to do it. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to follow exactly the same mechanism uh, to back up our virtual machines. And again, this is actually included within ESXi. You don't have to go out and purchase anything. However, there is one caveat that the exporting or backup of a virtual machine um, can only be done when the virtual machine is off. So I'm just going to shut down my Windows virtual machine and I'm going to shut down my first Linux virtual machine. And then I can actually basically show you show you the export process. I'm just wondering whether or not that one's actually going to go off because that just seems to be sat at the... Uh, I think that's booted from... I'm going to power off that one. I think that's, that's actually booted. Okay, they're both off. And I'm just going to check to see whether or not that... Yeah, and we've still got that disk image. Uh, obviously, I moaned on about this before. I actually turned around and said, don't leave ISOs connected to machines. And what do we find? Uh, we've got a date store ISO there. So let me just basically big X that. Go back to virtual machines. Okay. So we want to back up. Quite simply, the first thing we need to do when we're exporting to an OVF, um, we have to ensure that the virtual machines are off. So that may actually cause you a particular problem. But if you've got no other mechanism at all and you want to back up and you want to restore, or you may want to actually basically move these to another ESXi server, or you may want them to basically move them to VMware Workstation, um, then for this procedure, you must ensure that the, the virtual machines are powered off. I have actually received a few questions on Experts Exchange about this, um, where basically Tremana said, well, those options are greyed out, why? Um, probably because you haven't actually turned off the virtual machine. So quite simply, uh, what we're gonna do we're going to select the virtual machine and we're going to say export 
And there's an option there that says export with image. What that means is if you've actually got an ISO attached to the virtual machine, it will export that ISO as well. Remember, of course, if you've got a four or five gig DVD ISO of Windows Server 2019 attached, then your backup is gonna be five gig more. So we're just going to select export and I'm going to export the VMDK. That's the virtual machine disk, and I'm going to up the, I'm going to I'm going to export the NVRAM as well. I the BIOS, the CMOS, the CMOS configuration, and I'm going to click export. Okay, so I'm going to basically pop up. Uh, it's going to do two pop-ups actually. Uh, the first one basically for the OVF, and you click save, and then it's basically going to pop up again, and then you click save again and obviously as you can see they are chugging away down there um, 600 gig 500 gig um, now obviously this is a data copy operation so it is going to take some time it's not going to be instant um, but what it will do if you've got a 40 gig disk um, that's been defined for your virtual machine it's not going to export the entire 40 gig it's only going to export the actual contents which are in use um, so you will find this a little bit quicker but it's still um, a fairly long operation so I'm not going to sit here talking uh, I'm going to turn the cam off I'm going to turn the mic off and I'll speed this up in post edit and I'll come back to you and uh, then we'll export the second sorry the first Linux virtual machine um, and uh, then I'll disappear we'll come back and then I'll show you how we can actually restore them um, so I'll come back to you shortly
And we're back. Um, okay, well, actually, I thought that was going to take much longer than what it really did. Uh, that took about six minutes to download about 11.5 gigs. Um, and if we actually basically look in my backups folder, uh, we've got a file, a VMDK, uh, which is 11.5 gig. And we've got an OVF file as, as well. Um, size of the virtual machine, you may remember that we created uh, previously uh, in these parts um, was um, 90 gig um, so clearly it's not actually basically um, exported the entire 90 gig it's only actually exported uh, what's currently in use and slightly compressed it as well so we're going to do exactly the same thing I'm going to select my first Linux virtual machine and I'm going to right click I'm going to click export and I'm going to select my first line that's virtual machine dot zero VMDK, the virtual disk. And I'm going to set the NVRAM as well. And I'm going to select export. The browser window is going to open. And I'm going to click save. And it's going to open again. And I'm going to click save. And I'm going to wait for that one to download. And uh, when that's downloaded, um, I'm going to come back. And I'm going to show you what we actually do with these files. And how we actually basically do our restore brackets import um, so um, I'll be back shortly uh, catch you later so just to recap um, we've exported my first Windows virtual machine and we've exported my first Linux virtual machine and all these files are currently stored on my workstation local hard disk and now we're going to import them or we're going to restore them and how do we do this? Well, quite simply, we can select host and we can select create register VM. Or we can click virtual machine and we can select create register VM. And we select the option deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or an OVA file. And you would use this option as well if you had received a virtual appliance from a vendor. Uh, and you needed to use an appliance, for e.g. Bitdefender has a virtual appliance uh, for their anti-malware and anti-virus product uh, for VMware vSphere. Uh, you would deploy that exactly the same way as what we're going to do now. So we select the deploy a virtual machine from an OVF or an OVA file. We click next. Uh, I'm going to cheat here uh, and I'm just going to copy and paste an inventory name that I created earlier. So I'm going to call it restored-my-first-windows-virtual-machine. Has to be a unique inventory name. Cannot be the same as any other inventory name in the inventory. And remember, of course, that this has nothing to do with the guest OS name, which is set by the guest operating system. So I'm going to click to select my files, and I'm going to select my my first virtual machine OVF and I'm going to click open and I'm going to select the virtual machine disk, the 11 gig virtual machine disk and I'm going to click OK. Followed by next. I'm going to choose that flash data store we created in part two and I'm going to click next. I don't want to power it on automatically for the moment and I'm going to basically use, um, I'm going to use uh, thin provisioning for this and I'll talk more about that later in another video and I'm going to click next. Now, I've often seen an error message here that says required disk image was missing. Uh, just big X at and click finish. And you will start to see, first of all, that my restored, my first virtual machine appears in the inventory. And you can actually basically see here the task is running and it's at 2%. Um, so we're going to do another. We're also going to restore. We're going to do exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to click create, register VM, deploy again, followed by next. Uh, I'm going to cheat again. I'm just going to copy and paste because I've got fat fingers and a cat type. Um, again, so I'm going to select my virtual machine OVF and I'm going to select my first Linux machine OVF and I'm going to click open. And I'm going to follow by that next. Again, same flash data store. Next. And I'm going to power it on. And I'm going to, this one, I'm just for a bit of variation, I'm going to say thick. Again, big X out and click finish. And again, 
you'll see that we've got an inventory object which has been created, restored my first Linux virtual machine. Uh, and we can actually basically start to see that that's running down here, that's at 2%. And these other options here um, were my first virtual machine, which is obviously ahead at 17%. Um, so um, I'm going to let that run. I'll speed it up in the post edit and I'll come back and summarize uh, what we've done and I'll power up the virtual machines. So I'll be back shortly. Okay, and we're back. So, lots of green, that's what we like to see. Complete is successful. So, our restored My First Windows Virtual Machine has been restored correctly. So, I'm going to power that on. Now, of course, these are going to be an exact clone. Um, other than the MAC address, the MAC address will be different. Um, so if you have a specific reason uh, that you need to keep the MAC address of the original virtual machine that you backed up, uh, then make a note, cut and paste uh, to Notepad, uh, record the MAC address because you can set that manually afterwards because the MAC address will change on restore. So if that's important, make a note of it. So there's our restored Windows machine, uh, which, is, which is running. Um, if we have a little look at summary and VMA tools is installed yes it's installed yes it's installed so that's okay and we're going to basically just do exactly the same thing um, just waiting for our Ubuntu to boot. There we go. Uh, so there's our Ubuntu server. Of course, remember that it was Ubuntu server that we installed as our first uh, Linux virtual machine. So there you go. Um, that's really all I've got to show you in this episode, in this video that we've done today on how to back up brackets, export and restore import virtual machines to VMware vSphere Hypervisor 7 for free. Um, this is a function that's available for free in ESXi. Um, takeaways here, remember that you need to power off the virtual machines first before you export them to an OVF. Um, if you do actually basically require a more sophisticated product that allows you to back up the virtual machines when they are powered on, uh, then I would recommend that you have a little look at the backup and recovery products from uh, Cohicity, uh, Data Protect, uh, or have a little look at uh, Nakivo, or have a little look at Veeam. All three companies, and, and there are many others, all offer 30-day, uh, 60-day trials uh, whereby you can download them, you can install them, um, you can do backups and restores, um, now just remember that a backup is not a backup unless it's in three places and have a little think about that uh, and a backup is not really a backup unless you've actually restored it um, so many clients we visit uh, where basically we ask them have you got a backup and they say yes and then later on for whatever reason we need to restore it and we get into difficulties because they've never ever restored before using the product so if you do backup make sure you test the restore um, and on that note um, I would I would recommend um, if you're going to use uh, backup export and restore input virtual machines um, before you even decide to uh, delete a machine from the inventory um, belts and braces um, export it three times uh, on occasion we have seen uh, corruption on exporting and if there's corruption on the export you will not be able to import that again so belts and braces if it really is important 
certainly if you're moving a host server excuse me if you're moving virtual machines from one server to another server um, make sure that you export them import them to the other server test them first before you delete them from the old server or export them uh, three times and uh, and, and for, you can always check the md5 sum uh, on all your files uh, to actually basically check that all three copies match and then you know that you've actually got a perfect copy anyway thanks so much for watching this video on how to back up export and restore import virtual machines to vmware vsphere hypervisor 7 for free um, and in our next part i think it will be part 14 of this series this is part 13 um, we're going to look at um, uh, vmware converter and we're going to do some p to v's and we're going to do some v to v's physical to virtual and virtual to virtual conversions and um, this is a, a topic a question which is asked a lot at expert system so once again thanks very much for watching me um, please endorse the video at the bottom if you've liked these and uh, keep safe out there and um, I look forward to uh, completing uh, you coming back and uh, having a little look at uh, uh, VMware Converter. So all the best now. Bye-bye.